Today, we're going to take you on a two day back to back adventure to see two of the most amazing volcanoes Indonesia has to offer. So we left Bali, Semenyak and made our way over to Gili Manuk ferry port. It took us just under three hours to get there. Once we got there we got a short ferry across over to Ketapong and we were literally walking distance from our hotel. Hello. Hello. Later that evening we got picked up around midnight from our hotel and arrived at base camp. Not realising how cold it was, we ended up renting jackets. They said take off your jacket, but man's not hot. <laughs> Hey, hey. Oh, hello there. Hello, hello. We're on our way to Mount Injin. Injin, Injin, number nine. I'm going to eat your chance at night. If my track goes out of track. Dick, 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 dick. So, yeah, what time is it, Fumbles? 3.36. We're up in the mountains. So it's currently 3.30 in the morning and we've made our way all the way to the top of the crater. You can't see anything right now and the acid lake is not visible, but for now we're going to make our way down into the crater so we can get to see the sulphur. The miners have one of the world's most difficult job. Every single day they climb into the canyon to extract the sulphur that's there. That sulphur is then turned into many different things such as matches, batteries and even fertilizer. One of the most unique things about sulfur is that it burns with this beautiful blue flame. We made it, baby girl. In our higher jackets. <laughs> Swag. are a teeny bit delirious right now yes I have got a scarf around my head because we are <laughs> up in the mountains and it's freezing cold and we've just spent careful so we've just done a hike up Mount Injun really good it's not that tough really an hour and a half hike up at around uh what was it like two o'clock in the morning two the end, yeah. yeah so we we got a tour guide to pick us up from our hotel and around midnight it's an hour hour and a half journey to base camp where luckily enough we managed to rent some lovely jackets nadia bought a hat um a hat and yeah. yeah you start your hike it's about an hour and a half steady hike at an easy pace you've got a tour guide with you they give you a mask because you're going to go into a sulfur mine which is toxic gas not that toxic is yeah. manageable um it's more of a precaution isn't it really if, if, if you want to go really close to the actual the blue flames. the blue flames yeah so which, may i add there's only two in, in the, the world. world wide world and it's mesmerizing honestly it's amazing so yeah, we trekked an hour and a half up. There's a few stops along the way to take some rests and then you arrive at this massive crater. Yep. And then it's wow. a bit of a steep walk down yep. 
to see uh, the blue flames but they are a really really wonderful natural phenomena and then on the hike down you get to see this view look at that amazing it's amazing but yeah we opted for uh Leon. to go with the tour company this is our tour guide here's our tour guide the best tour guide in the world <laughs> here he is here's Rian. R -Y -A -N. my name is Rian. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to do it. So if you want to do a trek. Okay. I highly recommend this company. Yeah. Really looked after the us. The there it is. It was really, really good. And now we're really, we're, what we're doing is uh, we're climbing back. And may I add, Rian knows all the best photo spots. So he took the time out to take loads and loads of pictures for us as well, which is really good. And here is the our lovely, lovely family. family. This girl <laughs> is very strong. <laughs> Mashallah, Akila. Yeah. She did yeah. it. Oh, oh. Are you a bit tired, baby girl? <laughs> <laughs> yep, let them cross. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> they take you up the mountain if you want to go that easy option. <laughs> they actually carry you up. Grab, go Jack, Uber. You got your pick. Cab, as if I'm sitting. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna grab a cab. <laughs> no cabs here, bro. Yep. And now we're climbing back down. So it's an hour and a half trek back down, but it's a steady, steady downhill walk, which isn't bad. Back to the hotel. But I would finish on a note. If you're in Indonesia, whether you're in Bali, whether you're in Jakarta, Yogyakarta, or just traveling around, definitely do this trek it's absolutely amazing we only decided last night that we were going to do this and literally we managed to get from Semenyak all the way to Mount Injun area by getting a car local buses there's loads of different routes you can do and it was fairly cheap and uh, yeah so yeah literally we did this all within one day and now we decided last minute that we're going to go to Mount Bromo as well. Bromo, come on. Because why? Bromo. Bromo, we're coming. Bromo. Yeah, Bromo, Bromo. we're coming. Because when in Rome, we're right? Yeah, hey, Bromo. <laughs> when in Indonesia. Yay. So the saying goes when in Rome, but here is when in Indonesia. Next stop, Bromo. Later that night, we had to get a train from Banyuwangi to Probolinggo. At this rate, we probably had about four hours sleep, but we were ready for our next epic sunrise at Mount Bromo. So the name Bromo comes from the Hindi word Brahma, which is the creator god. So if you look closely, you're able to see a building which is a temple and people come to worship the volcano. It's considered a religious place by a lot of people who believe in Hinduism. People actually make sacrifices to the gods by throwing things into the volcano. This can be things like food, coffee, cigarettes, sometimes even livestock. We were also told that they also sacrifice cows and they would tie them into bamboo sticks and throw them down the volcano, which is absolutely crazy. Yeah, we did it. Climb number two. Get me to bed. After what felt like the longest 48 hours with just 8 hours sleep, we finally made it to Surabaya and got the train to Yogyakarta. Stay tuned for our food tour we did in Yogyakarta and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. See you on the next video.